What's up guys, welcome back to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Tuesday, February 20th. The market is closed on Monday, okay, in observance of President's Day, so don't forget we have a long weekend here, a long weekend of analysis, so if you guys want to see all the deep dives into stocks I'm doing over the weekend, please subscribe to the channel. I think we can hit a thousand by market open on Tuesday. That is the goal. All right, so I appreciate you subbing. Let's take a look here at SoFi. Stock finished down today about 17 bucks a share, 1.99%. Really no big deal here on SoFi. It is a relatively volatile name as of late. Let's start by taking a look at the one minute chart intraday here just to see if there was any potential opportunity that we could then look for on a Tuesday. Um, to maybe generate some scalping revenue around a uh, core position. So SoFi is one of those names that intraday, unless it is particularly in play, it can be a little bit more difficult to scalp simply due to a little lower volatility. Like you see these wiggles here, they're, they're really only a couple of pennies, maybe one penny, maybe three pennies at best. It's really tough to trade little wiggles like that because you have to account for a, a penny spread. And while a penny spread is obviously a great scenario, you need the volatility as well. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing, you know, what on other stocks I might consider to be a uh, breathe and go setup. You know, you see a pull away from a self fulfilling prophecy EMA, you see a low volume pull in. Okay, and it turns into a really high probability intraday scalp, generates some revenue. It's one of those backbone trades. Um, that, you know, some scalpers can, they can rely on, you know, myself included. It's one of those trades where in particular markets you can, you can rely on for the quote unquote easy money. It's just here on SoFi, you know, we need a catalyst to really, really, I, you know, SoFi can be a great stock to trade intraday. Um, you know, again, around that core position, which, you know, really the day to day big picture is what this video is going to be primarily uh, about, but it just needs that, that extra boost you know, to really, really trigger the volatility. So let's move on here to the uh, five minute chart and take a look at some, some self or uh, more so some bigger picture uh, sentiment. Let's take a look at the volume to see if we can see any changes in volume that are very obvious that correlate with big moves in the stock. It tells us a big sample size agrees or disagrees with a particular sentiment. By the way, if you guys want to learn more about what I was talking about before with the, with the intraday scalping or maybe swing trading unusual options activity, a great way to track what potentially the uh, institutions and big money's doing, or what I think is probably the best way to try to expedite things platinum one-on-one, -on -one, take a look at that first link in the pinned comment. I hope to see you join our uh, intimate little group. So take a look here. You see this big move to the downside? You actually saw a pretty substantial red candle that exceeded the volume off of the open. I mean, listen, bulls, you have to understand, the bears, the psychology of the bears, they're going to look at that and say, that's great. We like to see that as bears. Okay, just understand that if you're a bull, that that's what the bears are looking at. Um, you know, we saw really the best intraday move to the upside that we can pull from is going to be this one here. And I mean, yeah, did we see a little bit of increasing volume? Yeah, but it's not incredibly substantial. You know, is it worth mentioning? Of course. Okay, but as far as very obvious volume correlation with moves that say, hey, this this big sample size supports the bearish thesis or this big sample size supports the bullish thesis, honestly, not a lot to get from today's five minute chart. And that's okay. Sometimes that happens. We just got to move on. Looking at let's get really contextual now on the 30 minute chart, uh, starting here with day to day areas to keep a very close eye on the self fulfilling prophecy um, levels that everyone's paying attention to you know, psychologically important, the 200 period and the 50 period. Okay. We're right in the channel currently. So if we take a look here, zoom in a little bit here on the 30 minute, you can see that to the downside, we're currently approximately 1.08% away from that 200 period and about 1.26% away from that 50 period to the upside that, that forms our channel. Now for SoFi, that is not a very wide channel. So we're likely to see you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see one of these break here come Tuesday. So here's what I'm looking for. Okay, if you're a bull, we're going to want to see that 50 period break to the upside. All right. And if we're bears here, you're going to want to see that 200 period break to the downside. Really simple here, here on the 30 minute chart on SoFi.
So let's move on here now to the four hour chart. And you can see here that, man, the four hour chart is very much so in play. Look here, the 200 period is just about at 842 a share, and the stock is at 837. So this one becomes really simple. Listen, two things if you're a bull. One, ideally get back above that 200 period moving average, that gray line. Doesn't take very much, takes six cents, five cents, six cents. Okay? But if we were to see a downside test of that 50 period here on the four hour chart, you bulls, you know, that's a 3.5% move away, so it'd be a pretty large move. Okay? But we've seen SoFi do much crazier things. Obviously, bulls want to see that hold. All right, now bears, you're looking for really one, two, one thing, maybe two things, okay? Hard rejection as hard as possible off of that gray line, that 200 period. You really want to see that reject hard. And then ideally, if you're a bear, your, your primary focus is to break downside, at least on the four hour, break downside through that 50 period, okay? Let's now look at, uh, you know, arguably the most important chart, which is going to be the daily, right? really on any security, but especially on SoFi right now, because you take a look, you know, we are right at that 50 day. Okay. We're right at it. That 50 day is right at 846. We're 10 cents off. Listen, bulls, you know, we saw it. We saw it on Thursday, claim the 50 day. We're going to want to reclaim that here on a Tuesday. Okay, we gave that up today. That's okay. Okay, it's just been one day, but we're going to want to see that reclaim. Now, bears, for you, really simple. Reject hard off the 50-day, head down toward that 200-day, which, you notice anything? It lines up right, right around 8 bucks a share. That's going to be a psychological level. Okay, bears, you're going to want to see that crack to the downside, whether it takes a day, you know, a week. That's your primary goal here on SoFi. Uh, not only does that support your positioning, but it also supports the future thesis as well by encouraging other bears. Now, implied volatility here, let's take a look. You can see here it is slightly fading. It's in the lower region compared to the last two or three months, okay? That presents, you know, what a lot of option traders would see as a ideal time to purchase options. If you own options and you bought them, let's say, back in late January, right, like January 25th, for example, you've likely seen some IV crush. This here would be your culprit, okay? But as long as it lines up with your intended trade time frame, that low IV presents optimal conditions uh, to purchase options, okay? Assuming that IV is low compared to your relevant trade time frame. Let's now take a look at the bias in the chain that we got today. We have 178,000 total contracts, good sample size. You know, that's half decent. We can't, we can't complain. You can't expect 10 million on SoFi. All right, 111,000 of those were calls, 67,000 of those were puts. So we are seeing some call bias here on the overall ratio, but look at here. This is really interesting. The zero to 20 delta, the short-term speculators, they're actually undecided. We're seeing about 31,000 calls and about 30,000 puts. So the short-term speculators are pretty undecided. But then as you go down here and you start looking at, you know, the slightly less out of the money, at the money, in the money, and deep in the money, you're getting all call bias across all four of those ratios, which is more of the you know, slightly less short-term, more mid-term, and longer-term outlook here. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.